Welcome to Parkour Science Episode 8, Physics of the Kong Vault. What many don't realize is that there are in fact three different approaches to the technique commonly called the Kong. These three differing techniques make way for their respective advanced versions, the Cat Pass, the Kong to Precision, and the Double Kong. These techniques share many similarities which we will generalize, but also have unique differences which make them non-interchangeable. First, let's begin with the general idea of the Kong. All basic Kongs follow a few important steps. They usually begin with a run-up, arm swing, forward leaning jump, squared off hand placement in front to clear an obstacle, feet coming back under the body and landing. The technique begins with the run-up, the speed of which is dependent on the distance to be traversed and the technique to be used. The upper body is also set up depending on the technique being used. The last step is placed for levering and thrusting into takeoff. This is done simultaneously with the arm swing which offsets the center of mass to the proper position for takeoff. The legs thrust providing two simultaneous effects. A portion of the thrust is used to propel the body up and forward by way of propelling the center of mass. Another portion of the legs power creates a tangential force. This tangential force creates a torque which rotates the body around the center, causing the chest to tilt forward and the legs and hips to rotate up. Next comes a parabolic flight, during which control is all but lost. Your center of mass is on a trajectory which hopefully intersects the landing point. Next your hands touch down creating a fair amount of force, and with good technique, a well controlled force, up through the arms and shoulder which creates yet another tangential force. This creates a quick torque which rotates the body backward, allowing the legs to come back under the body center of mass for landing. Now we will break it down further, looking at the individual techniques. Dive Kong We begin with the run-up. The Dive Kong requires the fastest run-up for distance covered. This is because of the length of the parabolic flight without any use of the arms to help propel. The arms are of course swung at the beginning, however, creating the needed center of mass offset. The legs thrust for a jump at the same time creating forward rotation. The center of mass follows a parabolic trajectory which intersects just past the point where the hands are to come down. The pressure through the arms provides a fulcrum at the shoulders and the falling body creates a torque rotating the body backward. The feet and legs tuck for clearance as well as to increase the rotation speed. They extend again to slow and complete the rotation and come back into a run. Kong Pre Lowering the chest tends to be an important approach for entering a Kong Pri, and there are in fact a few reasons for this. Lowering the chest allows for greater arm thrust and extension. It allows you to reach the wall with the hands while maintaining proper distance with the feet for clearance. And it creates a counter rotation on extension of the body into the jump. All of this allows for maximum jump distance while keeping the feet under the body for a heightened or distanced precision landing. Double Kong the chest is lowered at run-up, but not as far as with the Kong Pri, because though the arm strength is still needed, the counter-rotation and clearance is not. The arm swing speed is at its fastest for the double Kong. The takeoff is almost identical in structure to the Kong Pri, except that in the double Kong, the chest is leaned forward when the hands contact the wall, and the legs and hips are brought up and behind. After pushing off the wall, the body, now tucked and leaning forward, extends. The high arc of the hips and center of mass significantly increases the effective distance and efficiency of the double Kong. The extension of the body both slows any further forward rotation and gives control as well as impact reduction when the hands come down on the other side. The hands coming down once again allows for the same rotation seen in the dive Kong. Tips A faster arm swing means a greater angular offset of the center of mass before the final thrust for takeoff. Kong Pri has the least, Dive Kong has more, Double Kong the most. Though the speed of the arm swing determines the angle and thus the type of Kong, this is very difficult to consciously control. The speed of arm swing is actually a natural instinctual response your body does to improve efficiency of jump angle for an intended action. Side note, people who have trouble with their Kongs where their legs go to the side when they Kong, this is usually psychological and recording video from behind will often show the arm swing is also torqued to one side as your body automatically does this to try to protect you. The importance of the split foot takeoff. Any good parkour instructor will tell you that the split foot takeoff is ideal when doing most Kongs outside. 
but here I am going to explain the physics of why this is true. There are two primary ways to take off in a jump, split foot or punching or blocking. For most people, jump height measured at the center of mass at a run is unaffected by which is used, though distance and rotation are. The back leg provides for finesse and control in the technique. A late thrust of the back leg and sometimes swinging the back leg can create extra rotational inertia and control which sends the legs up and the upper body forward. All of this combined allows for much greater clearance and thus efficiency of motion. If you like, the Kong is the dynamic parkour equivalent of the Fosbury flop. These three techniques give way to more advanced versions of Kongs as well. The Dive Kong shares its attributes with the Cat Pass or Level Kong. The Kong Pre has its inherent versatility as well as sharing its technique with the Kong to Cat and Kong to Safety Vault. Efficiency. The sweet spot for maximum efficiency, Matt shows it well in his double Kong, is indicated by a V in the x-directional velocity. This V is even on both sides, demonstrating that the thrust of the arms makes up for any loss of speed used in creating rotation. Finding this ideal efficiency yourself is usually what we are talking about when we talk about flow. Efficiency is best recognizable as the smoothest transitions of movement with the least changes in speed. So which of these techniques is most efficient? The answer? All of them. The efficiency of each Kong type is based on the space being traversed. This graph shows the approximate efficiency rating of each technique as it applies to mat, and most tracers for that matter, depending on distance being traversed. How efficient each technique is, however, depends on your level of skill and practice with that particular vault. Thank you for watching. To see more of Matt's videos, click here.